we have Pete Yorish here. Pete is the minister of Stocksfield Baptist Church. Good to have you with us, Pete. And Hi, Paul. And Pete is my minister, so uh, I'm particularly thankful to, to be able to speak with you today. Uh, we're in a season of prayer and we're encouraging our association churches to be uh, uh, seeking God and getting a sense of what God is saying to us. And uh, that's not just in, in this Lent period, but, but over the last few months during the pandemic. So, Pete, as you've been praying, uh, listening to God, and as the church has been praying and listening to God, what do you sense in Stocksfield, whether just for you or maybe more, more widely, what has God been saying uh, to the church? OK, thanks, Paul. Um, well, well, firstly, I think, as is always the way when we seek um, the Lord, um, he speaks in different ways, and we all know that. And I think for us as a church listening over the last few months during the pandemic, you know, it's been precisely that. God has been speaking in different places and in different contexts. The way we've been listening is, as a leadership team, we've been quite keen um, over recent months to devote more time to prayer. Um, I managed to get away on a retreat between lockdowns um, to the Lake District, again, very much focusing on what you're saying, Lord, where are you taking us? Um, so the questions we've been asking have been very much, you know, where are you within the pandemic? What are you doing? What are you teaching us? What are your, what are your priorities for us next year? Um, and I think there's a whole range of things that have come out of that, some, some of which uh, won't surprise you because uh, they do seem kind of fairly obvious. Um, the first one, I think, that really came out um, from those conversations and those prayer times consistently was the ongoing need for pastoral care within our churches. Um, not just in the sense that that's something we need to do because we always do it, but there's a, obviously an emphasised need at the moment because of the pandemic. Um, and there's also a sense that as we start to finally get on top of this virus and manage things in a way which enables us to open up, loosen up, start getting out and about, um, as some of the pressure eases on us, um, for a lot of people, those who've been holding tension, anxiety, struggling with mental health issues, uh, some of this stuff might start kind of pouring out. A lot of people have just been holding it together. Uh, people who are uh, pressurised for lots of different reasons that we don't need to go into now. We all know the range of pressures. But for many people, uh, although there's the positive side of opening up, there will be, we think, lots of ongoing pastoral care concerns for people. Uh, so we put lots of extra things in place as a church. As we felt God emphasise that for us, um, we've put additional layers and levels of pastoral care in uh, as a church to effectively look after our folk. But also uh, starting an initiative called the Prayer Station, where when we open the building up in the next few weeks, uh, we will be advertising a slot where people from the community if they want to talk or offload or be prayed for, uh, we'll have a slot once a week where they can walk in and there will always be somebody there with a cup of tea, a uh, cup of coffee, happy to chat. So pastoral care, I think, is the key thing uh, for our church families, but also recognising those needs in the community. That was the first thing. Um, the second thing was I was on retreat last October um, and I re I've been reading a book uh, by Peter Scazzaro called The Emotionally Healthy Leader. Um, and the front page of that book has an image on it of a tree, a very, very strong, healthy tree with a very big, strong, healthy root system. Um, and the Lord spoke to it um, to me for us as a church. So regardless of what I was learning reading the book, um, God said, actually, this is a picture that's for your church. Uh, and I really felt that we need to be, as, as churches at the moment, encouraging people to dig deep into God, invest in their spiritual roots, you know, invest in their spiritual lives, develop spiritual disciplines, um, prioritise time with God. For the people in our church who've had more time, and that's not all of them, but for those who have had more time at home, to use that time productively in Bible study, in prayer, you know, whatever way works for you in terms of growing with God. And a um, real sense of passage from kind of Jeremiah uh, about roots by the river, that sense of 
a strong tree, if it's going to withstand the storms, needs a, a good, a strong root system. And a strong tree, if it's going to bear fruit for the Lord, needs a good, a strong root system. And I really felt that that kind of picture was emphasised at the Fresh Streams conference where uh, Chris Divert, Christopher drew two pictures um, of some dandelions with really strong roots. And then also then drew a picture of tr some trees and, and basically said exactly the same thing. The first picture was about being rooted in God. And the second one was about being fruitful for God. You know, exactly the same stuff. So I've been doing some teaching and preaching around that on the church and just encouraging people to really focus on God, uh, not, not so much on the news or negativity or cynicism in our culture, um, but to really stay focused on the Lord. So, so that's been a real thing as well. And then probably the last one I would say is um, how we remain missional when we're all stuck at home. I was very keen from the beginning of the pandemic that um, after a few months of us emotionally getting in touch with what was going on, to really encourage the church to find new ways of reaching out, uh, particularly where we've had more contact with neighbours on our streets probably than ever before. So we remain, we retain that focus. And I think where we are now, thinking ahead, is thinking, okay, everyone's talking about the new normal and not going, not going back to the old. What does that mean in terms of mission? Because what I hear a lot in my church is just a really strong desire. We just want to be back in the building and worshipping. We're missing singing. We're missing tea and coffee with each other. We're missing sharing stuff. We're missing have, putting an arm around somebody's shoulder and praying for them. Those are the things everyone's missing. And of course, I'm missing that too, aren't, you know, aren't, aren't we all? <laughs> um, but as we, as there's a real desire to go back to gathered worship, I'm really working on, on how do we retain that focus on reaching out um, and thinking how we might want to do that in new ways, um, how we might want to encourage people to be focused on um for lack of a better phrase, fresh expressions of church. How do we potentially do things in a new way, develop church in a new way, um, that uh, as, as, an in, as an inherited church, we can support and encourage and get behind. Uh, and that's where I want to take our leadership team to in the next few months. Because um, without getting into a longer debate about that, as we all know, um, the things that are really connecting with people in our culture is where the church gets out into the real world uh, and gets gets where people already are, goes and meets people where they're already at and develops church bottom up roots up rather than inviting them to an existing uh, church community. Um, so, yeah, lots of things there. So th those are probably the key ways in which I think kind of God has been talking and shaping what we do um, over recent months. Thanks, B. And it strikes me that... Uh... <laughs> Those three things of, 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 of good pastoral care uh, are being rooted deeply through good spiritual disciplines in, into Christ and um, prioritising new forms of mission and new ways of being church. That's not just something for Stocksfield. I think that that is widely uh, true uh, across, well, not just Baptist churches, but all churches. Uh, and, and so that's really helpful that you've articulated those things for us. Um, yeah, one sense I have on the pastoral care is, is just that as we come out of the restrictions, the, the first thing we do is just actually rather than rush into lots more activity is, 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 is care for each other and just say, OK, how is it? Uh, as you say, people will, will, will start to bring to the surface all that's been hidden, uh, hidden away. So, so the first phase may simply be just getting a sense of who, who we are again as, as God's people as we maybe can meet in person and talk to each other about it. Uh, and it's out of that that, uh, that God will lead us forward. Mm. Thank you. Well, that's great. And uh, uh, really appreciate you sharing. And we, uh, I just pray for, for you and for the church uh, as, as you seek to continue to listen to God and follow his way for the church. Father, we thank you for Pete, that you've uh, brought him to Stocksfield and you've uh, uh, used him well. Uh, to help the church to, to listen to you at this time. Uh, please give um, a real unanimity to the church as they seek to follow you and your ways. 
uh, into the, the new life that you have. Please bring that healing that is needed within the church fellowship and the wider community. Please, Lord God, will you enable that church to become more deeply rooted in you and uh, uh, drawing on your life in all of its wonderful ways uh, to be replenished in spite of the, uh, uh, the, the difficulties we've had. And, and finally, Lord, will you cause these, these new things to, to take uh, root and to shoot up? Just think of spring bulbs coming up. Lord, may, may the church enable these new bulbs, these new shoots of life, of your spirit, of missional life, to, to spring up wherever you have put it into people's hearts and open the doors for, for opportunities for them. And uh, God, what you're doing in Stocksfield, may you also do in all of our churches, we pray through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Paul.